Welcome to the Think Wildlife podcast. Today we have Patrick Arnold who is the founder of the 10 billion strong initiative. This movement aims to provide educational leadership to the next generation of conservationists. So hi hi Patrick, welcome to our podcast. It's a pleasure to have you. Hi there. Thanks for inviting me. It's really great to be here. So you're the founder and CEO of the 10 billion strong initiative. So could you just talk about this and why you started uh, this uh, initiative so 10 billion strong is an environmental leadership organization and we focus very intentionally on how we frame the organization when we were starting it our belief is that there are tremendous environmental challenges that humanity is facing as a collective right now and also will be facing in, in the future we're we're looking towards a population of around 10 billion people maybe around 2050 or, or 2060 where it's expected to to probably peak and then then decline um it's still a significant increase from where we are today and we we know we're we're challenged on a lot of fronts with climate change and plastic pollution and food and energy scarcity and and really an imbalance in a lot of different sectors and rather than feeling pessimistic about this we are really optimistic in the way that we think because we really think that human creativity and ingenuity is the the way to get out of some of these challenges um we've got a lot of great evolutions in uh technology that that's helped humanity quite a bit and we expect that to continue so we're we're optimistic um but we're also really forward looking as as well um but we're really um focused on leadership development and looking at uh, people as the the catalyst for change and the skills and the motivations and the ambitions to to drive change and that's what we're investing in. Okay, so why why do you think it is necessary to involve the youth in sustainability? For us youth are important for a number of reasons. First, we're very focused on on youth because they're at the stage of their lives where they're considering who they are as people and what they want to become and what impact they want to have on the world and and so there's a sense of opportunity and and promise and um questioning that happens at that age the other thing is we think there is a tremendous opportunity for for youth to maybe think a little bit differently about their careers and their impact than previous generations and and third um we're really aware that some of the biggest environmental challenges that youth will face were created multiple decades or even generations before they were born and and so we want to give them a a good chance to to have an impact uh, to to create a a world that works for them their kids and their the, the future generations to come so that they're not overly saddled with those challenges so uh, one of your initiatives that the 10 billion strong organization is the green leaders academy initiative could you uh, just elaborate a bit on this initiative so for us it's most important that our participants and our community members feel like they are working towards concrete action so rather than learning about the problems or or learning about what's not working what we want to do is move people pretty quickly from understanding the challenges to developing as leaders and then st- start taking effective action and so the the course is built upon the three pillars of environmental literacy leadership development and then civic engagement and so at the end of the day we'll assess whether we're doing a good job or not uh, based upon what actions uh, our community members take and how effective they are at at really addressing some environmental issues at the community level the national level and the international level So how successful has this been so far? Yeah, so the the way the the program works is is we enroll people directly through an online platform and so we're a, a pretty young organization but we we've trained about a 1000 uh young environmental leaders from about 25 different countries um on our online platform and then we're also training people directly through community groups in a number of different countries in um sub-Saharan Africa as well as south and and southeast asia and we have a, a train the trainer model where we've trained ngo leaders educators and social entrepreneurs how to use our our curriculum uh this year we've trained more than than uh more than 50 leaders um across 
15 different countries. And, and those folks are, are starting to train other trainers um, and then they're training youth. Um, so we have this ripple effect. And, and so what we expect to see over um, the coming months and, and years is really thousands and hundreds of thousands. And um, our long-term moonshot goal is a million youth that are trained as a result of our, our direct trainings and our, our, the trainings that our our community members do, and then hopefully we'll see some really great environmental actions uh, as a result of that. You also have a, one of the other programs is the Environmental Leadership Accelerator Program. Uh, could you please elaborate a bit on this? Yeah, so the Accelerator Program is really designed to help organizations that are already doing great work think about how they can improve and expand their their impact. And so we think about everything from the, the business models that the organizations operate with, the, the staff and um, evaluation structures for the organization, uh, the partnerships and the, the networks that they exist in. And, and really it's like a, a tune-up or an optimization for organizations that uh, know they have a strong mission and just want to be really focused on um, being bigger and, and better at that. And what we found is not only is this helpful for individual organizations, but as a sector, there's a lot of knowledge sharing that can happen because all these organizations are working um, sometimes in collaboration, but but sometimes on their own in silos. And so when they share resources, they, they can become uh, much stronger as a collective rather than just more individually focused. Okay, that's great. And what's the long-term vision for this? Yeah, the, the long-term vision is that the organizations that we work with really are, are clear-eyed about the impact that they want to have. They do a good job of uh, evaluating it, and then they, they continue to expand. And it works in tandem with the Green Leaders Academy because um, many of these partners are also implementing some of our training. And so we think we can reach more people and do a more effective job uh, by working with stronger local organizations. So returning back to your uh, Green Leaders Academy, so you mentioned that you want to train 1 million Green Leaders. So what legacy do you want to leave behind by training such a large sum of environmental leaders? What we're starting to to work on now as our community grows is is tracking our collective impact. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, ran uh, a campaign this this July, a plastic-free July campaign, and it's... um, it's not something that we initiated um, on our own, but there's an organization based, based in Australia, Plastic Free July, um, that works on collective action, much the same as us, that, that tries to inspire and, and coordinate people to reduce their plastic footprint, and uh, especially around single-use plastic, uh, for a, a month of global action. And so we mobilized our members, and um, I was looking at the stats um, just earlier, and we had dozens of members from more than 10 countries participate in this campaign. And collectively, uh, they reduced uh, the single-use plastic that might be typical in their daily lives by hundreds and hundreds of, of kilograms. And, and what we see is, uh, for us, just as a um, as a small organization, um, not only were they reducing waste, but they're also um, cleaning up beaches, cleaning up parks, uh, educating others, uh, educating hundreds of, of other community members about their work. And so all of this together uh, for us is is one example of collective impact. And so what we want to see as our future legacy is all of these positive environmental in- indicators um, that our, our uh, participants contribute to as, as somehow attributed to our leadership training and, and our work. And so not only will we see a lot of these positive environmental impacts uh, um, over time, and we expect them to grow and scale as the influence of our alumni increase as, as they go through their careers. And so you sort of imagine right now for working with youth, high school students, uh, college students and, and young professionals, maybe for the average um, participant in, in that age group, maybe their, their span of impact is, is relatively modest, but uh, fast forward 10 years, 20 years or, or even more, uh, what we hope to see is our legacy is um, some pretty influential alumni thinking very specifically about positive environmental impact in all the, the work that they do, not just for, um, quote unquote, typical environmentalists, but policymakers, uh, government officials, um, 
health officials, lawyers, business people, really all sectors, we want them to, to be making substantial impacts. And, and that's what we see as our, our long-term legacy. That's great. And how can people who want to join your program, join your program? Yeah, so they, they can go to to our website. Um, you, you can probably share share a link in, in the show notes, but uh, um, 10billionstrong.org, it's, it's spelled out 10, T-E-N, uh, billionstrong.org. And there's a number of different ways to to join. Uh, we'll be having uh, another Green Leaders Academy that will will run from uh, early November through the end of the calendar year. It's about an eight week program, and that will be open to to youth from uh, any country in the world. The, they're eligible to join our online academy. Um, and the other thing is, we're we're always interested in expanding our our network and our, our partnerships. So there there's ways to get in touch for organizations who might want to to use our curriculum. Um, there's opportunities for that, or to to do uh, trainings with us. Um, I, I will mention one other thing, just because I, I think it's relevant for how organizations might partner with us. Is is when we started the Green Leaders Academy, um, it was actually after we had run one of our accelerator programs for um, a, a group of or- really fantastic organizations in um, West Africa, uh, Southern Africa, and East Africa. And uh, the organizational representatives were incredibly strong, and um, really visionary in, in their work. And, and many of them were doing environmental leadership and environmental education training. And our 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 catalyst, our spark of inspiration for the Green Leaders Academy was you realized lots of or- grassroots level organizations all across the world are trying to train on issues like climate change and plastic pollution. Uh, but all of them were developing and researching and creating their own curriculum. And, and what we thought we could do as sort of a, a sector um, building uh, initiative was we could create the, the curriculum for all of these important environmental issues. Uh, we could find the best resources uh, all over the world, um, make this curriculum open source so that anybody can um, draw from it. But that if you think about an organization in India that wants to train youth in an organization in Ghana and an organization in Indonesia and one in, in Malawi, um, they might all want to teach on climate change. And, and the science of climate change is is more or less the same um, wherever you go. There, there's no like Indonesian version of climate change. There's, of course, what's happening in Indonesia. But the, the big science globally is the same. So we want to just make it easy for organizations to get access to the best materials and to be able to adapt it to their local context. And, and so that's pre- presented a really great opportunity for collaboration over the last year. And we expect that to, to grow in future years. Great. And what have been some challenges uh, uh, you guys have faced with your academy as a whole? Yeah, there, there are a couple of challenges with all, all of these types of, of programs. I think with, with any big group that you assemble, there's um, different levels of engagement and commitment. And, and some of the the engagement um, can, can be challenging. Sometimes connectivity can be difficult if, if people are accessing our remote programming um, with low bandwidth uh, internet connectivity, that, that can be an issue. Uh, from time to time, um, there's some interest in, in starting projects and following up um, after our training. And people are like, okay, great. Now I know the issues. Now I, I want to mobilize others, but like, where do I start? And how do I get going? And so we've been thinking a lot about um, giving people the tools to start projects. And, you know, in particular, everyone's always interested in, in how to fund these things. And so we've been thinking carefully about maybe uh, offering some funding for uh, maybe the most uh, well thought out uh, project proposals um, so that people can actually take action and, and track that. Um, but funding for uh, following projects is is definitely a priority for us, but you know, like lots of organizations, there's just scarce resources for that. Okay. So my final question for you is what has been your uh, biggest learning from 1 billion strong? I, I think for, for us, we have really been pleasantly surprised by how much energy and enthusiasm there are across youth communities all over the world to, to make a difference. Um, so in some places, uh, it it could feel like it's just a matter of like convincing people that this is important. Um, but by and large, that's not our challenge. By and large, there's just so many thoughtful, visionary people 
uh, interested in, in stepping up that, you know, our, our big challenge is, is how do we effectively um, work alongside of them? And so my, you know, the pleasant surprise is that uh, I think there is a, a bright future ahead despite our many challenges. So like our organization, um, you know, 10 billion strong is optimistic in our, in our DNA. But, you know, I'm optimistic just from my personal experience working with so many incredible youth um, doing great work. And your organization is an example of, of that, uh, doing really fantastic work around uh, wildlife and in particular thinking about different challenges and opportunities in, in South Asia. So, yeah, I, I remain uh, very, very optimistic about the future. That's great. So thank you for your time. It was a pleasure having you on the, the podcast and we hope all the best for your uh, organization. Yeah, thank, thanks for this opportunity to share and uh, cheering you on as well. Uh, have a, a pleasant afternoon and we'll look forward to staying in touch and collaborating. Thank you. Uh, same to you.